All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna talk about pinching fig trees. And there's an application for pinching fig trees that I have really observed this year about trees that are in hormonal imbalance. And we're going to be in this video talking about pinching those particular trees to bring them back into a state of balance. Every tree has to have the right balance of hormones, right? There is a top to every tree and there is a bottom, right? There are the roots and there has to be a balance between the two. And there also has to be a hormonal balance. Uh, we can also influence the hormones ourselves by actually doing pruning. And it doesn't matter if it's in the winter time, if we do our pruning, if it's in the summertime when we do our pruning, or if we actually have the cold kill our trees by accident or just because we live in a cold place. Because if we are disrupting the trees or the structure of the tree is changing at any point, that is then changing the hormones within our trees. And it's not just figs, by the way, it's also applicable to our other fruit trees. So I've done a lot of summer pruning this year on my cherries, my plums, my apricots, even my persimmons my pears, the fig is no different in the summer pruning in that we do something called pinching where we remove the apical buds, the highest growth point on the tree. This is where the leaves form. You can see one right here. And we just break that off with our thumb. You can also snip them off as I did here with uh, pruning shears. And this changes again, the hormones in the tree when done in the summer done during the growing season encourages our trees to flower that's why we do this not just on the figs but on my cherry trees we're trying to encourage fruit buds to form in future season in the winter time when we do the pruning that encourages our trees to grow right the hormones change that encourages growth the following year so the the balance in the pendulum that we're talking about is that we want to be right here in the middle right but sometimes our trees just grow very quickly, very vigorously. They put out a lot of leaves very quickly. And the pendulum, instead of being right here in the center, goes off to the right. And that's just not what we want in most situations. Sometimes with these younger trees that we have, really young, vigorous trees that are from cutting, or maybe they're air layers, we want them to grow very quickly. And that's typically what happens. They're very young healthy vigorous or even if we pruned our trees really hard to the ground and our in-ground trees have these suckers that come up from the base it's very a very similar phenomenon is that they're really out of balance their pendulum is not in the center they're off to the right and well we need to bring that pendulum back to the center with the help of pinching so this is kind of what my argument is in that today's video, we're talking about pinching to bring them back into a hormonal balance. There are other applications for figs, for pinching figs, for summer pruning figs, which is really the same thing that we've talked about in the past. And if, I would highly recommend that you guys look at other videos that we've done. One is called Rivers Pruning. You could just type in YouTube Ross Ratty rivers pruning that's about actually increasing our production on our trees by over a hundred percent it also is a great way to time your crop so that you can avoid really bad climatic times of the year like let's say monsoon season um, we also have talked about argentile pruning and that actually is done in the beginning of the growing season when the trees wake up and you remove the apical buds then to actually get larger and tastier brevas so there's a lot of applications for pinching, um, which is weird because there's a lot of controversy over whether or not pinching actually speeds up the ripening process. I'm still really in uh, this current moment. I've been challenged in the past and I have taken it upon myself to really learn as much as I can about these fig trees, as you guys know. So I've been really trying to look at pinching or not pinching from a different lens to figure out if indeed it does actually speed up the ripening process. But at least for now, I've really figured out, I think, this balance that needs to occur, especially on these younger trees and the in-ground trees we're gonna look at. 
So that's what this video is about, is that application. And I would highly recommend that you guys put a lot of thought into pinching and not be so bogged down by the controversy that revolves around pinching. And please open your mind to the other applications. So as I said, with these really young, vigorous trees that we have, what I typically do is I get them to the right size, the right height, and then I top them. And if they've gotten enough light, which is typically my goal, these young trees, even from cutting, will fruit, right? Because we've discussed in the last main crop video that we did, we talked about how the main crop forms and that the trees, as they grow, they have to get the right amount of light to set those fruit buds. Every variety is different. There's a certain intensity and duration of light that needs to be met. So then as these younger trees have set their fruit buds, typically what's happening is that they're so they're growing so quickly while also setting their fruit buds. Like this is a great example here of this tree, which is, uh, what's this one called? This one's called Celeste. This is a Celeste from a woman named Lorena. Thank you, Lorena, for sending me this. This is a, quite an interesting heirloom Celeste tree that I wanted to try. And Celeste is just a really healthy, vigorous grower. But you can see all the way down here at the base, there's fruit buds that are forming along the branches. But the tree is reluctant because of the hormonal balance to actually form those fruit buds. It just wants to focus all of its time on growing. So once we've reached the appropriate height and I've determined that the tree is also healthy, I've determined that the tree is vigorous enough and strong enough, we've pinched it. We're going to form the fruits on those branches or on that main trunk that we formed. And then if we continue the watering and also maybe a little bit of food that we've been giving the trees, we're then going to see these trees not only fruit along the branches, which is exactly what we want, we got to get the fruits in the length of our season but also the trees are now going to branch out in different directions and they're probably going to form a y or a v pattern that we look for so we get that main trunk that comes up and then it separates out and forms the scaffolds the permanent branches that we want which is perfect that's exactly what we want for these young trees some people argue they don't want to do pinching during the growing season for the form and they'll do pinching to get them to fruit, but they won't get pinched. They won't do pinching to actually form the form, get the right form of our trees, the right structure of the trees. And I would totally disagree because it's all about watering after you pinch. If you're going to slow down your water on these younger trees, um, I wouldn't. I would really suggest on these younger trees, especially, continue watering them well throughout the season maybe later in the season you want them to lignify well then you can stop your water but certainly after pinching what we're going to see is new branches and a lot of people complain about those new branches because if they're not watering them and the tree is not healthy enough and strong enough i've been very careful with some of these trees you know i'm not pinching every single one of them these are just too small they're not really strong enough so that after i pinch them they're not really going to branch out the way that I would like them. You know, some people complain that the branching is just not very strong. It grows in weird directions sometimes because of the fig mosaic virus. I get all that. But most of the time on a really healthy, vigorous tree like these, some of these younger trees I have, this is absolutely a great way to form, uh, get the form that we're looking for at a quicker date. And that's what this is all about. Getting these young trees established as quick as possible is really the goal of pruning and the goal of training our trees because next year we're going to have a bigger harvest and every year after that the faster we do this the better uh and i would argue if we get the branching that we want right after we do our pinching right here's actually a tree i pinched about a month or so ago this is a young tree that uh, i realized it was just not really that healthy it was not really that well established and this guy uh you know it wasn't going to fruit the fruit buds were not setting and i said to myself i really want to see fruit on this tree at least something so i pinched it here about a month ago you can see the the scar there on the branch 
And then it responded by putting out a lot of new branches. Obviously not very thick, not very vigorous, but there's enough of them. Um, on a healthier or more vigorous tree, like let's say one of these that looks much better, bigger leaves, healthy leaves, it's growing really quickly. I'll see better results with those um, rather than this one. But now the tree is actually fruiting. The fruit buds are present. And the nice thing actually um, with the trees that you can imagine, this is what they're going to look like is they're probably gonna form two or three new fruiting branches re relatively at the top of the trees after we pinch them. I imagine they'll be much more vigorous and uh, longer and thicker than these. But we are preserving then these apical buds. So going into the next season, we are gonna have these apical buds present. And by having apical buds present, we're gonna have an earlier harvest and an easier time fruiting our fig trees. And we're also gonna have typically a larger harvest. As we've discussed in other videos, when we talked about the in-ground figs, we talked about how when you compare different buds on the fig tree to each other, there is a vastly different difficulty of getting the fruit buds to set on those trees. That was also what we talked about, is that typically you wanna prune your trees as little as possible because the more we preserve these apical buds throughout the winter, the easier time we have fruiting them. And that we discussed the branches from the apical buds, the new fruiting branches that come from those apical buds have the easiest time fruiting, they fruit at the earliest date, and they typically fruit the most. The lateral buds typically have all of that we just mentioned, but a little bit less, and it's a little bit more difficult to get them to fruit. And then of course, the lateral buds are the buds further down the main branches or further down on the branches have a more difficult time fruiting, and of course, fruit at a later date. And then of course, the even more difficult version of that actually is the sucker that comes typically from the soil level or, or even below the soil and those are the branches like these in-ground trees i have here that really have that pendulum swung off to the right they are super fast growers they don't want to fruit and that's typically what i've seen in the past on a lot of these in-ground trees so that's bringing me to my point now with these in-ground trees is that we have the fruit buds present and I've done this for numerous years, actually, with some of these in-ground trees, specifically this White Marseille, this Brianzolo Rosso, we have a Barb Alone here, even this Lampira One. These trees in particular, uh, they always set their fruit buds relatively easily, even after total dieback. Uh, but they grow so quickly because they're in-ground trees, they're in that balance that's totally wrong and they have so much water in the soil that has its access to them um, these are the trees that set the fruit buds but they just don't fruit and they'll just grow all year and you'll be sitting here and you're shaking your head and you're like why aren't these trees actually fruiting i see the fruit buds it's all about the hormones and that we have to pinch we have to intervene on these trees to actually get these fruit buds to form and it just dawned on me because look you know the fruit buds go all the way down here that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there was at least 10 or 11 there's probably 12 leaves on this tree and not a single fruit had formed even though we had 12 fruit buds how ridiculous is that so there are particular circumstances in my mind where pinching is absolutely necessary now the same thing could be said over here, even this Ron de Bordeaux, which was protected in the winter time. Here's another particular situation. The fruits obviously set very easily down here, the first leaves of the year. It was really good to see. They got the light that they needed. We, the tree was in a good state of balance in the beginning of the season, because in the beginning of the season, the trees are, it's still rather cold out. The metabolisms of the trees are not really going that well quickly so the trees especially on the in-grounds they don't grow that quickly early in the season because they grow slower right the balance is more towards the center 
And then when the balance is more towards the center, these fruits had formed. And look how much bigger these fruits are in the beginning of the season compared to the next fruit buds above it. They're significantly smaller and further behind. So this is telling me that about after the fourth or fifth leaf, the tree then decided, well, it's now the growing season. Let's grow very quickly. We're warming up very quickly. And the rate in which the leaves were forming was very fast. Uh, so then the tree now was in this state of imbalance, right? We're growing too quickly. So now I've decided I'm going to slow down the growth by pinching, bringing the balance back to the center. And now these fruits are getting larger and the fruits are actually forming on the branches um, and getting, they're swelling on the branches, I should say, not forming. So there are many examples of this, I think. You know, the little ruby as an example, I didn't need any intervention whatsoever. This uh, Nerino over here didn't need any intervention whatsoever. It grew at the right rate. This Rondé Bordeaux just went nuts. Uh, this LSU Fouye just went nuts. You know, a lot of these in-ground trees, even the ones that survived, this this Nerino over here, this Moro de Caneva, is growing super fast. So you can see the fruits down here. The fruit buds are present. They're just not forming or they're not swelling. And that's because the trees are growing so quickly. Same thing even over here with this LSU Tiger. Another Moro de Caneva, same story. Actually, the um, the long to dude actually was pretty decent at it, growing uh, a bit slower on some of those branches. But on all the almost every one of them, the green Maturinska, even the LD, the long to dupe, the suckers that came up, they have the fruit buds present. But I needed to actually pinch them to get them to stop growing and say, hey, like it's time to already fruit. Like you got it, you got to get your act together because we don't have forever like we don't have we only have 180 frost free days here in the philadelphia area guys so that's just what it is what it is um i wish that wasn't the case and that i had a long growing season and maybe i could let them grow and grow and grow um and then maybe get more fruits that way but you know i'm trying to get the highest quality fruits i don't want to be greedy about this um, but there are certainly applications here for these younger trees, getting them the right form and established by also changing the hormones back to the center there. So for me, that's what this is all about, this technique. Um, I think it's more, <clears throat> this application is really something that I think a lot of people should wake up to and pay attention to um, because of all the controversy that revolves around pinching um you know that people unfortunately uh you know it it, it lessens the the i should say uh the amazingness of this technique and all the applications that come with it um, it's so, it's so overlooked and that's really what the river's pruning is that i mentioned is that once we get the new branches that form on these trees after we pinch well, then those new branches grow to a certain height and length, and uh, then those branches fruit. And by doing that, well, you can increase your production by over 100%. So it's like, I don't know, it, it just seems to me that the controversy, unfortunately, has just really put a shadow on uh, some really interesting stuff in the world of figs. Uh, and I wish that more people would uh, would talk about this in um in more detail so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this one please hit that subscribe button you got this far if you might as well and then check out our blog figboss.com you can subscribe down there at the bottom this is the kind of stuff this really intricate interesting stuff as well as the fig reviews that we're going to do that's where that's going to be on the blog um, so we will talk to you guys soon we'll catch you guys for the next video take care